For many around the world, Africa is synonymous with the prevalence of AIDS and HIV. It is an important part of education here. Under President Afewerki, HIV rates have halved. Today, the prevalence of HIV, according to the World Health Organization, is 0.8%. For neighboring US-backed Ethiopia, it's 2.4%. And for the richest country in Africa, South Africa, it's more than 18%. By comparison, HIV prevalence in the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C., is three times higher than that of Eritrea. There is uh, HIV spread in Eritrea, but uh, the percentage is very low, as low as 1%. And Western doctors are wondering why, yeah. when uh, all your surrounding countries are at much higher rates. What may surprise some viewers is that such successes in Eritrea have been accomplished without international charities or NGOs. Helping people is not bad at all as an idea, but using this uh, pretext and using the organizations created in that environment for their own ends is what makes it uh, uh, unacceptable to, to, to anyone. But for us, it's not a matter of whether we like or not like uh, NGOs or humanitarian activities. You want to be independent. It's a very complex situation because you get trapped in it. We've gone through this process because uh, it's food aid coming and the population is deprived of even working. They will be waiting for handouts, waiting for handouts for years, cripples uh, uh, communities. And once communities are crippled, they are so dependent, it becomes uh, an addiction. Governments are subsidized because of this uh, food aid and humanitarian or so-called humanitarian aid. They're not engaged in real uh, productive activities. They don't mobilize their own population. It's slavery, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, poverty, it's famine. You're sometimes being used for their PR exercises. People are, are brainwashed and manipulated to believe things that are not true, that are not for real. Finally, when crises like this come up, what do politicians, politicians do? They think they can still continue to manipulate opinion opinions in, in, in the street. Again, without NGOs, we would see a network of brand new hospitals and medical centers throughout the country, from the highlands of the capital right down to the Red Sea coast. We went again, unannounced, to one of Eritrea's many free hospitals to see for ourselves why healthcare statistics in the country are such a source of optimism. According to the World Health Organization, life expectancy in Eritrea is 66. That would make it seven years higher than US-backed aggressor Ethiopia, and around the same as the state of Mississippi in the richest country in the world. As for maternal mortality statistics, this is what a former revolutionary fighter, Lul Gabrib, now president of the National Union of Eritrean Women, told us. The clinics, health centers are working on it. If it was 1,000 women of maternal mortality from 100,000 in 1995, now it has gone to 450, which is one of uh, the best achieved in the African uh, continent, especially in the sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, the child uh, mortality rate has also reduced uh, at a level which is not yet acceptable because we want to have a zero level, but if we compare it with the Millennium Development Goals, we are on the right track. Certainly no comparison to countries that have allowed international so-called humanitarian agencies to run their health care. During the time of the independence, what the Eritrean government, or at that time the APLF, inherited was a devastated infrastructure. So it has to start from scratch to provide service to the Eritrean population. So the first thing that was conducted was to formulate a national health policy. You see, some governments would immediately invite Western agencies in to dictate the way the health system worked as in so many African countries after independence? No, no, because I think we, we have a different experience even during the liberation, the war for the liberation of the country. Infrastructural development has been key to the development of Eritrea in the 21st century. Do we need aid? We can't live with aid. We don't need aid. So we'll have to have an alternative. We need to develop our own capabilities. We need to uh, uh, go through a phase where we have to invest in a sustainable economy, we've made our choice from day one.